Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High, and today I'm going to give you a really small overview of the work by J.J. Thompson and his discovery of the electron. Before we start, please remember to press the subscribe button, hit the bell so that you get my latest updates, and maybe consider buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below to support my work. I do a whole more fulsome video of the nature of J.J. Thompson's work and how he manipulated charges using electric fields and magnetic fields to establish the existence of the electron. And in essence, this is going to just do a really quick overview of his experiment. And I mean really just quick. And in essence, he was trying to understand the nature of cathode rays. And so what he did was he set up an experiment where he applied forces on the cathode rays, which he believed to be negatively charged particles, through these two fields. But importantly, critically, he applied them in such a way so that they experience forces in the opposite direction. So let me explain that. So I have a plate and a plate over here, which is going to be my electric field that is going to be represented like this. And I'm going to leave this in the orange form. We have an electric field acting down like this. We have, of course, our negatively charged particle, which is going to go in this direction. And I'm going to also going to be placed at a later stage in this section over here. But of course, it's moving through the field here. And in this case, because it's a negatively charged particle, we expect it to curve up in a form of a parabola because of the fact there is a constant force acting in the upward direction. And that force is equal to, equal to the EQ, the electric field strength multiplied by the charge. But at the same time, J.J. Thompson applied a magnetic field. And in this case, he applied the magnetic field in perpendicular to this one over here. And as a result, because we now have a negatively charged particle in a magnetic field, it experiences a force, in this case, in the downward direction. So we have a force in the downward direction over here. And from the other situation, we have a force in the upward direction over here. And so he was able to manipulate the electric field strength and the magnetic field strength in such a way that the charge passes through undeflected. And what that means is, is that we have, and with our, the force due to the magnetic field equal to QVB, we say these two are equal to each other. And so what we get is EQ is equal to QVB. And you can see what we end up getting is the velocity is the electric field strength divided by the magnetic field strength. He's able to establish the velocity of the charges. And noticing that the charges were not moving at the speed of light, it definitely was particulate in nature. Then critically, he turned off the electric field. And now what happens, only the magnetic field applies. And so now what happens is, is that the QVB causes it to go in a path. And in this case, it's going to go in a circular path. So the QVB ends up being mv squared over r. Now, if we rearrange this, you can see that our velocities cancel out to some degree. And what he was interested in is the charge to mass ratio. So when you rearrange this, you get the charge to mass ratio is equal to V over BR. He was able to understand the velocity already because he determined that. And he was also knowing the magnetic field strength. And he was able to look where that charge was going and as a result, work out the radius of curvature. And then he worked out the charge to mass ratio. Now, the charge to mass ratio was known for a whole variety of elements, which is simply a ratio or a number that they were able to calculate. They didn't know the charge. They didn't know the mass. But they could work out what the charge to mass ratio is. Now, generally speaking, atoms that are larger will have a much smaller smaller charge to mass ratio because the mass is larger, whereas the smallest atom, hydrogen, would have the largest charge to mass ratio because the mass is the smallest. He since discovered that the charge to mass ratio was significantly larger, in fact, 1800 times larger than the one of hydrogen. And as a result, he was able to establish that this particle was 1800 times smaller, the electron. Well, I hope that has helped you understand the basis of J.J. Thompson's work on the charge to mass ratio and the discovery of the electron. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.